Okay. Hello. Um, my name is George Galley. I'm a media artist, and but I use code sometimes, but I don't know how to code. So what I thought I'd do is I'll do a live coding and I'll show you how I work. Um, and I have a certain kind of system that I, that I use. I do mainly like motion reactive and sound reactive and generative art. Um, but for me, code is just like Photoshop or... <laughs> So yeah, yeah, anyway. Yeah. Check it again. Uh, dun dun. It was working one second ago. Yeah, it was. Sorry, let's try again. Sorry, technical glitch. Mm -hmm. There we go. Oh, okay. okay, but now we're huge again. Okay, I don't know. I don't know, like, if you guys, where I'm, where I'm pitching this talk. Um, so if I'm going too fast, I've only got 20 minutes, and I'm going to try to do. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, we want to mirror it. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Arrangements. Yes. Oh. Okay. Cool. So yeah, I'm not a coder, I, but I've played in code since I was a kid, pretty much. Uh, I consider myself a designer, but I've played in director and then to flash and then to processing and then to open frameworks and arrived at JavaScript, which I think is, is the way to go for a media artist these days. Um, yeah, interested in geolocation, physical computing, blah, blah, blah. Um, quickly show you some projects before I get going. Uh, I just did, just did a project for um, a band which uh, um, is a kind of generative sound reactive piece where we project onto the, onto the band. Can't really show you a lot because it's under, under wraps. Uh, But the idea was not to not to make a projection and to make like this emotive piece for the band. Um, this is another project I've been tinkering with recently, which is like um, I saw a project in Japan where they had like these ants eating uh, world flags, and I thought it would be nice if we could like play with Google Maps in the same. Place. Whoa! <laughs> so. I mean, the, well, if we have internet, yeah. So the interesting, the interesting thing about this was that because of the whole cross-domain thing, I have to like save, save all the. I thought it would be as simple as like taking a screenshot of the canvas and and then like manipulating it. But basically, you have to like save all the like individual tiles like onto your own server. Um, I think I've got another version of that. Maybe. Anyway, you get the idea. Cool. Oh, here's. Um, this is a project I did uh, called Digital Zoo, which uh, using using LED lights and like SMS, kind of based on Tamagotchi, and kind of taking the piss of the commodification of like animals, the big five in Africa. Um, it's a project I've been working on for a while now, which is called the Selfie Project, and it's basically uh, maybe I've got a few here, which um, is pretty much manipulating images of myself in various kind of ways. Yeah, all using the same kind of code that I'm going to show you, which is like this motion reactive stuff. Um, and this is a project that I did last year called Internetics, where we tracked tracked a whole lot of uh, delegates in a conference using Wi-Fi system, triangulating them, and let's see if I can show you something. And then um, using their personal data in order to like kind of make connections with people. 
So this is this is speed, speed and movements of people, and uh, what what I did then was I used that data for the next year's invitation, and you would get like a you get like a poster of your movement, and that's pretty much 2,000 delegates moving around. Um, and it turns out that Wi-Fi is amazing to track people. You can you can you can get like 30 centimeter accuracy, where you can't get that with Bluetooth. And so apparently Apple's taking away the, because I use like MAC addresses, but apparently Apple's taking it away, or they say they have, but they haven't really. So the MAC address is still visible. And with that MAC address, you can identify someone pretty well. So what I did is I, I got people to like scan, scan their phones and um, when, they, when they registered, and I had all their personal details. I had their LinkedIn, I had their Facebook, and I could like link up to all sorts of things and like make connections with people. So yeah, that's pretty much some stuff I do. I work with ELY sometimes. Um, and this is a project I did, which is Morse Tweet, which is just a Morse code tweeter. OK, so why JavaScript? Um, because everyone's fucking using it. And um, and like what really like frustrated me with like the old like kind of processing or um, C++ stuff was that it was all, I had like piles and piles and piles of live Live, um, stuff sitting on my hard drive, and I couldn't, I couldn't actually show anyone unless I did an installation, and it kind of like goes counterintuitive to what's happening today. Um, yeah. Also, like now you can like JavaScript like talks to Arduino. It's pretty fast, and of course, there's two like really killer libraries called 3JS and D3JS, which are both super amazing and written by geniuses. So. Um, pretty much works, media, media queries pretty much work everywhere except in fucking Safari. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's, it is in the code in Safari, they just haven't turned it on. So you can, so I mean you can get, you can get like motion and sound record stuff in the browser, pretty much in every browser except Safari, go figure, Apple. So let's try. Um, like I said, I'm not a coder, so I'm a little bit nervous, so let's see. So the way I set up my files is, um, this is, can you can you read that? Okay, I have like this generic index file that has um, a whole lot of libraries. Um, uh, I've got like this main main JS file which pretty much um, sets up a canvas and sets up the context in a canvas. And I've got like a secret canvas that I hide on the side, which I can show you. Um, probably the interesting stuff in this code is this thing over here. Which just makes me be able to like not repeat stuff. So basically, all I'm doing is like, uh, I'll show you here, like, um, let's close that, close that, close that, close that, let's close that. Um, so what I'm able to do is just create a hash of the of the JavaScript file I want to call. So let's call that, and that and that will call in the JavaScript file. Um, so it means that I just have one index file, and I'm just when I'm when I'm coding, I'm going straight into JavaScript, uh, and everything's pretty much set up. I've got like a, a video file which does the generic. I'm happy to share all the stuff with you, but it's yeah. I'm, so this just this is just the the basic media query kind of stuff. And so what, that, what, it, what it means is like I don't have to think about all the shit and like straight away I can just like start coding. I've also got this other file here which I kind of nicked from someone else and made it to my own, made it my own. And I mean, I guess that's the point of what I'm trying to say. It's just like find something that works for you and use it. So it's, um, I've, kind of taken, I've kind of taken the way Canvas works and I've kind of made it a little bit processing-y and just made like things that are, things that are difficult like a little bit easier, so I can go fast. Because um, like I said, I'm not really interested in the code part, I'm interested in the stuff that I get out. So, firstly, what I'm gonna try and do is, um, so I've got, this, I've got this function draw, which is basically, uh, it's basically get animation frame with a whole lot of fancy stuff on it. So what that, what that means is I can, I can, yeah, I can go. So let's, first I'm gonna try and make a Particle system, um, create particle, and I'm going to pass it an x and a y position, 
and I'll create a particle system uh, as an array. <coughs> so, can you read that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So there we initiating a particle. We can give it a speed, and we can give it a um, speed x. I normally like to do this kind of stuff. Like I said, I'm probably doing stuff wrong, but who knows? Okay. Huh? We've got a typo. Particles. No, that's right. Oh. Particle. Uh -huh. Okay, and when I create a particle, I'm just gonna like push it, push it into the array. Particles. I'll do that. Yeah. Cool. Speed Y as well, right? Speed Y. Thank you. Like I said, underscore Y, and then we can add them here. Like I said, yeah. <laughs> happy for the help. Okay, so um, let's just try something here. Uh, we can go uh, particle dot create particle mass x comma mass y. I've got like a little function that causes uh, uh, ctx. Okay, CTX, I, don't know, I mean, I don't know, like CTX is like context, I'm just like calling the drawing function in uh, uh, full style equals red, and it's the, uh, what's it called? Circle? Um, <laughs> full ellipse. It's okay, I'll get there. Thanks for <laughs> particles. Is that right? Uh, for. I'm just pointing out his I've got lots of errors. Where have I got an error? 19. Function. Okay. Well, I think you did pass your uh, line 8, your variables. Okay, I've got one more error you said. Uh, okay, hopefully we'll have a particle system. Whoop. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's in common. No worries. Uh, oh, particles not to line for, you don't need the particle. Uh, uh, yes, okay. Uh, what's going on here? Particle. <laughs> Uh, that all looks good. Um, create particle. Uh, okay. okay. So we need to like move our particle. P dot x equals plus equals p dot speed x there's still an error somewhere 
Come on, guys, help uh, me! Yeah, <laughs> Your fuel ellipse, do you need uh, two pi? Um, I should have a function. Nine twenty-five. ellipse. I've got a function here. Okay. Which I then. Uh, with height, right? Your height is zero. Uh, nine twenty-five. Nine ellipse. Yeah. Ten, ten zero. Ten. Ten, 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 ten. Yeah, ellipse ten ten. Oh ha ha. Okay. <laughs> Finally, I thought I was going crazy. Um, no? Your yeah, speed X, um, the speed X and speed Y is not good. Okay. Let's just go turn, turn. Yes! Hey! Okay. <laughs> So I've got like a little random function here which kind of acts like processing or so put it in. Um, and if you want to clear the canvas, CTX, clear rect. And I've got a, a width and a height that I, that I set up before. Are this documented in processing.com? This is... Th this is my own little library that's kind of like a mix of processing and whatever, but like they pretty much all work the same. So um, I also got a I also got a little function in my creative thing which is called um, which is called fade. Call the context and I put in like a percentage, and it should give me. Let's turn it down a bit. So yay, particle system in three minutes, four minutes. <laughs> Okay, that was very stressful. Um, okay, like so, so if you want to, if you want to do like, if you want to do like, um, uh, mo like, like motion testing stuff, basically you got to go through all the pixels and compare the different colors to each other of of the video. But you can't really do it in every pixel because um, because it's going to kill the processor. So what you do is you break you break up the screen into like a number of blocks and then just and then just sample sample that block. So the way we do it is we just uh, loop through all the pixels. Let's give it a pixel size of 40. That's x plus equal pixel size. Now we're flying. And we loop through the y also, the height. Uh, height and let's go so that should show you the grid that we're working with yeah hopefully no yeah. So there we've got there we've got a grid of like let's call it a rectangle for rect and yeah. So we've got a grid. Let's uh, do this. So we've got a grid. Okay. Now the next thing I want to do. Actually, let's move this here. So the next thing I want to do is like get the video in there and talk to it. So um, I can, I've got a hidden, a hidden, hidden context which is like sitting. I can show you, and you call draw image and video and give it a width and a height. Oh, well, CTX draw image, hopefully, okay. yeah, so there you can kind of see the video which has been drawn in. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sample it, so I make a sample and I go in CX dot get image data. So that gets all that gets like an array back of um, 
of, of your video give it a width and give it a height and almost there um, hopefully uh, let's okay so the way that um, the way that uh, uh, get image data works. There's a few ways of doing it, but honestly, like I've tested, I've tested all the different ways, and they're pretty much the same. Like you can use like bitwise operators, blah blah blah, but they're pretty much, it's pretty much the same f uh, speed. So, and this way is kind of more logical or semi, because I'll show you, it's a bit weird. Um, so, the the way that um, the way that uh, get image data works, it just brings out this like massive array, and it goes like RGBA, RGBA, RGBA. So every, so it's going like in sets of four kind of thing in this massive long string, I mean array. So if we go like that, uh, oh wait, wait, wait. So we need to define the position, which is X plus Y times width. And that will just give you the, the position on the screen. And because we're looking at every four, you can just multiply it by four, and hopefully that will give me a position. Uh, pause, and if I go, um, ctx dot full star equals RGB, hopefully that will give us, whoop. Uh, there's just no light. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, let's. Uh, I'll decrease the sample size. Maybe you can see me more. So there, you can kind of see oh. that I'm there. <laughs> so we can do the same thing for for green and blue. Uh, and like I said, it goes. It goes in an array, so you can just so it's just you just look at the next pixel and the next pixel. So if you do that, there we are. Um, and blue. So if I give this particle system a color, uh, and we go. And so now we just create a particle. Wait, 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 I'm missing something. So motion reactive, yeah, yeah, that's why we're here. So um, the way that uh, the 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 simplest way to do motion reactive is just like it's just like compare like you can compare like all the colors, but there's no point. Like red works fine. So you just compare like red. Reds between the one frame and the frame before, so I create like a, I can create an old array here, and I just uh, go uh, old pos equals to r, and and then I just test. I just test the the red value. Math dot absolute red minus old position is greater than sensitivity. So if it's uh, if the sensitivity if the red values are different by by more than twenty out of two hundred and fifty five, whatever that is, ten percent, then in theory uh, In theory, it should work. In theory, oh, we just need to give it a color here. Create particle. Let's see, C equals RGB. RGB. Yes. No. Ah. Kind of working. Something's going wrong. Um, also. In a particle system, like if you're creating too many particles, you got to like delete them after a while. So I just check if the particle 
is less than naught or its y value is less than naught or its x value is greater than width or its y value is greater than height and then I can just go particles dot splice which will remove it from the the array Whoop. and hopefully that should kind of work there's some oh wait 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 wait, wait. there's the problem okay <laughs> and we don't need that anymore Whoop. particles okay Boom. We have a motion reactive system. Let's just turn this down here. Uh, 60. Maybe get into the light. And you can see, so there's a particle being created every time, every time it finds a movement. And let's change the sensitivity. Bam! That's it. Motion reactive system in 12 minutes. Someone on the I guess the point what I'm trying to make is like, it's just like set up the system that you want. Don't listen to like anyone else. Like find, fi like find, find code that works. Drop it into a file that's full of functions that the way that you you normally move, and then like. Forget about it and rather move on and do and do the cool stuff. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <It worked. laughs> oh, cool.